Imagine an online buying and selling app like TradeMe that was free for casual users. No subscription costs, no success fees, no listing fees. Well, that's pretty much what online marketplace All Goods is, and it must be working with a million listings in its first year. Founder and CEO Levi Fawcett is with me now. Levi, thanks for coming in. Um, as I've just pointed out, All Goods effectively a free TradeMe. Yeah, I mean, we, we get that a lot. Um, in reality, there's a lot of a lot of differences between us and Trade Me, but the parallels are certainly there. Of course, though, because Trade Me has been such a phenomenal success story and something which we all know and we use. So let's talk about the differentiations um, uh, and the business proposition which you guys put together initially when you started on this what eighteen months ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I think there's um, there's a huge number of big differences between us and Trade Me. Um, a lot of that came out of a trip myself and another founder had uh, to China. They've got um, a platform called Alibaba. A lot of people are familiar with that now, and Tmall. Um, and just the mobile browsing experience and the way that they use e-commerce on mobile is incredible relative to New Zealand. So I've obviously grown up with TradeMe, um, and it's it's great. It, it, it is a good platform. It grew really fast. However, nowadays, I think there are a lot of really key um, sort of issues with TradeMe. One of the ones that um, sort of we discussed earlier was the, the difference between the new and used. Yeah, So, but, and this is interesting because what your site does is it differentiates between the casual user, like me, and as I pointed out, it's free for me, Absolutely. but it's not free for a retailer. So yes. it's almost, is it almost presenting shop fronts like, the, like they do in China where it allows people genuinely as shops to reach a massive digital audience? Absolutely, yeah, um, that's exactly right. So small to medium businesses is our core focus. Um, we really want to help those small small businesses that don't have a huge amount of experience with search engine optimization and sort of just online and mobile presence in general. Um, we've given them a storefront. It's customizable. We charge them small fees. That's our business model. Um, and we drive a lot of our traffic through our secondhand, our used goods section. But there's a really, a very, very clear switch. So um, as I mentioned earlier, one of the big problems we saw with TradeMe is you can't really switch between the two. And so browsing for new things kind of feels like you're in, a, in an op shop. Yeah, and it's annoying for users. It's the only thing Absolutely. about trading which really annoys me. So you've completely got over that. And when you look at your website, there's a there's a very big button at the top which sort of says um, second-hand goods Absolutely, or, yeah. or, or new shops as such. Um, and you say that you can you can optimize or you can customize people's um, offerings. So so you're sort of helping the website build as well or the page build for them. Yeah, absolutely. So we kind of offer a, a small level of customization. It's not the same as other dedicated sites like Shopify, um, but we allow them to customize their storefront. They've got cover images, kind of create a profile for their business, and then we do all of the hard work in the background. We optimize their site. We help sort of them advertise. We do a lot of the social media. Um, and what sort of fee would they pay for that? So the the starting fee is just twenty nine dollars a month, um, and then we have a have a three percent success fee on each on so, each. So that subscription sale. model. That's that. Okay, that's cool. Absolutely. Um, do you have to pay police? I mean, to find the retailers <laughs> infiltrating? Um, n not not really. We uh, early on we had to push reasonably hard just to get get businesses on on the site. Um, Nowadays, it's very organic. We get a lot of just just because we're we've got a lot of um, a lot of traffic now, a lot of users, and so we get sort of half a dozen new businesses every day. Yeah, and that must come as a huge relief to you because I mean, initially, uh, what were your target numbers in your first eighteen months? What were you hoping you'd get as far as listings went, for instance? Yeah, um, in the first well, in the first eighteen months, we were we were targeting probably one hundred fifty one hundred fifty thousand listings. Um, Early on, we didn't think we were going to make that because we were only getting a few hundred a day. Um, and then, I guess, over time, it just got more and more exponential. Um, Did it start going crazy? And yeah, because, because, as I said in the intro, you've, you've hit a million listings. Yeah, absolutely. It did. It really started going crazy. We, um, we added lots of different ways so, so sellers can just copy their, or sync their listings with us just in, with one click, um, so from their existing business. And so I think... Yeah, after we did some of those things, there was there was one day where we got sixty, seventy thousand listings, just just in a twenty four hour period. And does that mean you've made it? Does that mean that it's that it is a runaway success, despite the fact that you were taking on this 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 mountain of a company trade? <laughs> um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say we've made it. We are. Um, I think we've we've come. We're very very close. We're certainly at the point where 
it's looking like we're, we're going to succeed. It's going to be hard to fail from here. <laughs> you're all quite young. I looked on the website. Maybe I'm just old. But, you know, you, you're all, it looks to be, you all look to be in your early 20s or so. Uh, has age been a barrier or has it been an asset? Um, I think in, in, in more ways it's been an asset. In some, in some ways it's been difficult. We've, we've probably made every mistake in the book. <laughs> like what? What sort of big mistakes have you made? Um, just big, big mistakes such as really focusing on our product too much. Um, we didn't spend enough time earlier on just sort of trying to build relationships and understand how other businesses were doing things. Um, there were other mistakes we made early on around raising money, around um, sort of grants and other things that you could do that experienced, you know, any, any experienced executive would would, would just do straight away. Well, so so you you didn't know which opportunities to chase, but you have since done that. We we've since done that. Yeah, we've got some good um, sort of advisors. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've got. Um, I also do subcontract work for Rocket Lab, and so we've used right. a lot of those connections to to really f- figure out what we should be doing. Um, because, is, Peter, yeah. is Peter Beck a bit, bit of an idol to you? Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say an idol. He's he is very very good at. Um, understanding or at looking at really, really big problems. And so, yeah, well, certainly the conversations I've had and the advice I've got from him has been really invaluable. So so funding-wise, who, who's invested? So so far, we're purely privately funded. Right. Um, we're, we're, certain, we're, we're actually pretty okay from a funding point of view at the moment. We'll be looking to raise possibly near the end of the year if we are not cash, cash flow positive already. Um, so, yeah, it's been private New Zealand investors so far. And what sort of escalation are you looking at? What, what are your targets now, given the fact you've exceeded tenfold any target you initially set yourself? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, the big the big targets for us at the moment, well, and certainly in terms of product development, are um, becoming cash flow positive, as I said. And um, we're currently sitting at a five point five million dollar valuation. That's what we we raised our uh, we closed our last round at. Um, and so we'll be looking at something. Um, a little, a little bit higher than that. Not, not massively at the end of the year. I think, um, mostly because our revenue model requires a lot of scale to really become a, a very profitable business. Um, so yeah. scale wise, if we if we look another twelve, we look to the, let's say the end of twenty twenty. What sort of size market would you want to have then? Yeah. So in, end of end of twenty twenty, um, we're we're targeting eight between eight and ten percent. Of the of the total um, yeah. online market that trading have at the moment, it's um, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually a, an incredibly ambitious goal. We've got we've got over ten percent of trade me's businesses already. We've just hit a bit over eight hundred businesses now. Um, so the real challenge for us is going to be scaling that user base. Does that does that surprise you that the businesses have bought into what you're doing before the the casual users, despite the fact? For us, for the casual user, it was free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. It surprised us early on. Um, when you when we really thought about it, it makes sense. Businesses have a huge amount of incentive. Um, they're, they're trying to make money. They've got a lot of listings. Um, so they'll be on both sides very on much. on both so. sides, yeah. Um, what about the... Because the, you don't do auctions. Do you think that missing a trick was a very deliberate decision made? That was a very deliberate decision made. We actually did originally offer auctions on the site, on the website. But the problem with auctions is you've got to have almost the entire market for it to really be effective. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just getting you know a reserve price and a buy now price that are very similar. There's no real advantage to it. Um, and we've looked at other models around the world like Let Go and Carousel and Five Miles, other other sort of startups in a similar mm-hmm. space. Is this? Um uh, it may be premature this question, but but is is in the back of your mind building something and then on selling it? I mean, is there an exit plan? Um, not not really. I mean, obviously, obviously, there's the standard exit plan, and that is become a profitable company. Yeah. Um, and and that's our goal. Um, I I actually think we've got enormous potential, um, potential to, to become a, a hugely profitable and an enormous business. Um, typically with with marketplaces. The biggest hurdles are early on. The hardest part is to build that critical mass, and we were we were really aware of this early on, and so we've put a huge amount of time and effort into making it um, a really good user experience and to sort of get that real early early traffic. Um, and mostly, I think we've succeeded in doing that. So from here on out, it's really just about building those bigger relationships and about scaling. And I think as long as we can get the fundamentals right. Um, from a from a first principles point of view, 
we, we, we will win, I think. <laughs> well, the numbers don't lie, do they? And it, it is, has been a huge success in a very short uh, space of time in what I would say was a, a very competitive um, sector. So, uh, Levi, thank you very much. The CEO, Levi Fawcett, uh, CEO of All Goods, a name I imagine we'll hear more of. Thank you very much.